This is kombucha, a fizzy, fermented drink that's becoming increasingly popular. It's made from tea that is first sweetened and then inoculated with a special mixture of yeast and bacteria. As the tea ferments, a film starts to grow on the surface of the liquid. This film is the basis for what's called a SCOBY, or symbiotic colony of bacteria and yeast. This layer will continue to thicken as the tea ferments and can grow to several inches thick given sufficient space in the container and sufficient nutrients. As the bacteria grow, they begin to produce polymers that give the SCOBY its characteristic look. These polymers are mostly polysaccharides like cellulose, but there are some proteins in there as well. Normally, the SCOBY is either discarded or used to start new batches of kombucha. Sometimes people fry it and eat it, but overall it's mostly viewed as a waste product. But in reality, it is anything but. In this video, we're going to be exploring how to turn this slimy pile of goop into a material that looks and feels just like real leather. To start off, let's make some kombucha. Doing this is actually really simple. First we boil some water, making sure to only use filtered or distilled water, as tap water contains chlorine and other ions that'll kill our bacteria. The amount of water will depend on how much kombucha you intend to make. Now to brew our tea. For every gallon of water, we add two tea bags and one cup of sugar. This is actually slightly more sugar than we'd normally use for kombucha, but it'll mean more scoby is produced. Allow the tea to steep for 10 to 15 minutes and add the sugar while it's still hot so it dissolves. If we were simply making kombucha to drink, we'd normally brew it in a large, wide-mouthed jar. But in this case, we're more interested in the scoby and we want to grow it in large sheets. So we'll want to use large, wide, and flat containers. We've used both large plastic bins and steel hotel pans for this, and both work well. For the hotel pans, we filled them with freshly brewed tea, leaving about an inch of space at the top. For the bins, we filled them with about four inches deep of tea. Kombucha is an aerobic culture, which means it needs oxygen to survive. So for the bins, we left the lid on enough to cover it, but still allow for air. For the hotel pans, we put a sheet of glass on top and added four skewers as spacers to allow for airflow. Once everything is cooled to room temperature, we can add a small amount of liquid from store-bought kombucha. This will be our starter culture, and a scoby will start to form after a few days. Some people will suggest that you need a piece of scoby to start a batch of kombucha, but that isn't true. The scoby is part of the life cycle of kombucha and will form on its own. And now, all that's left to do is wait. The longer you wait, the thicker the scoby will become. When we dry the scoby later, it'll shrink in size significantly, so we need to allow it to grow to at least 1-2 to two centimeters thick, which will take 2-4 to four weeks. As it grows, the bacteria will deplete the nutrients in the liquid, so you may need to add fresh, cooled sugar tea. We normally can get at least one good scoby from a batch of tea, so you'll usually only need to top up the liquid after harvesting a scoby. After the incubation period, it's time to remove the scoby from the bat. When it's fresh, it's very slippery, so be careful not to drop and damage it. Before we can treat it and turn it into leather, we first need to dry it. We've tried two similar methods for this, and are still perfecting this technique. In both attempts, we made a frame out of wood which we could lay the scoby across. It's then sandwiched in place with either another identical frame, or some extra pieces of wood. The fastest way to remove most of the moisture is to leave the drying scoby in the sun for a few hours, but placed in front of a fan for a few days also works well. When it's freshly dried, it feels a lot like parchment and it loses a lot of its flexibility and becomes far more brittle. Obviously this is nothing like leather, so we need to treat the dried scoby to make its transformation complete. The treatment is actually fairly simple, though we're constantly working to improve the process. The first time we attempted this, we simply coated it in a small amount of olive oil which we buffed into the surface. Instantly the scoby went from a papery, brittle mess to supple leather-like flexibility. It was foldable, soft, and could be easily shaped. We even tried cutting it into strips and twining it, and it felt almost identical to sinew. When braided, these pieces remained flexible and strong for months. However, the issue with olive oil is that the scoby constantly dried out and needed fresh oil to be applied. So in our next attempt, we changed the procedure a bit. Instead of olive oil, we used a mixture of mineral oil and beeswax, which is normally used to finish wood. It was a bit too goopy, so we had to apply it pretty thick. We left it to sit for a few days, and then tried to remove the goop. It took a fair bit of gentle scraping and buffing to remove most of it, and the finished scoby was actually too flexible. It felt more like plastic wrap. This was partly because of the mineral oil mix, but also because this particular batch wasn't allowed to grow for long enough, and was a wee bit thin. While this isn't what we were going for, it's still very interesting. And because of how flexible it was, we realized it was the perfect opportunity to test its water resistance. 
To do this, we draped it over a wide mouth jar so there was a divot in the middle and then secured it with an elastic. We poured a little bit of water into the divot and some soy sauce for coloring to make it more visible. And then, we waited. After two days, only a single drop of liquid had dripped through, and it wasn't because it had made it through the leather, it was because there was a small puncture, and when we went to move the jar, a little bit fell through. The rest had simply dried out and crystallized on the faux leather surface. For a failure, this was pretty impressive. Finally, our latest batch was by far the most successful. We made sure to let the SCOBY grow for as long as possible this time, and we once again changed our mixture of oil. This time, we used about a cup of coconut oil with a spoonful of our mineral oil beeswax mixture mixed in. Instead of gooping it on, we gently melted it on the stove and poured it into a spray bottle. This made applying the oil far easier. We gently misted both sides, briefly buffed the oil into the surface, and allowed it to sit for a few days to soak in. When it was ready, we cut the leather out of the frame and used some paper towels to gently remove excess oil and buff the rest into the surface. When we first picked up the piece, we were instantly stunned by how like leather it felt. It was incredibly flexible and supple. Bending didn't harm it in the least. This was the material we'd set out to create, and to say we were excited was an understatement. We immediately set out to see what could be done with it. Since this is meant to be fabric, we wanted to see how well it could be sewn, so we made ourselves a little wallet. When it was done, it looked impressively like a wallet made from actual leather, and handled just as well. This is far from the last time we'll be working with this material, and are already working on ways of treating the leather to make it look more like normal leather, or give it other textures, colors, and properties. If you want to see some of our other tests and experiments, be sure to head over to the brand new SciHouse channel. We've already tried other treatments, and the results were pretty cool. That's all for this video, I hope you've enjoyed. If you have, be sure to subscribe and check back every other Monday for new videos. Also, be sure to let me know what you'd use this faux leather for in the comment section down below. If you want to support the continued production of science videos and research like this, consider checking out my Patreon. Every penny goes towards making the videos better. That's all for now, and I'll see you next time.